Videocards.com is making some big claims with this leak. They're claiming that NVIDIA is about to announce DLSS 4.5 which is a second generation transformer model for the upscaler, and they're gonna update frame generation to a dynamic 6X mode. To be clear though, this is not at the time of filming officially announced by NVIDIA. However, NVIDIA is about to have a big CES presentation. So it would make sense that big features could be about to be announced, but to be clear at this time, this is a leak. So before we get into the details, and there's also some other leaked claims about NVIDIA, some leaked claims uh, about what AMD is gonna be announcing and a bit about Intel here from WCCF Tech. Uh, so as we get into all of this, again, it's important to analyze the source of a leak and what is their track record. So videocards.com posts all sorts of leaks and rumors that are often from other third-party sources, not videocards.com claiming it as their own leak. However, there is no source posted here other than they're just saying that in NVIDIA is about to announce this tomorrow. And, and videocards.com has a good tracker with, uh, track record with this type of leak, meaning there have been many occasions where prior to a major new uh, GPU announcement or GPU technology from AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel, videocards.com has a history of confidently claiming what's going to be presented and then being correct, but having it out a number of hours or a day or two before it's officially presented. In the past, um, they've actually been wrong in cases where like, uh, they claimed AMD was about to announce the 9000 series and some features for it. And then that didn't happen, uh, at, at last year's CES, but that was because it seemed like AMD delayed the announcement at the last minute. And that ended up actually having been what happened behind the scenes. So while it's not a hundred percent track record of complete accuracy, it is close to that. And it makes sense when things just kind of changed behind the scenes uh, from what would the, was the original plan for the announcement. So, videocards.com has a good track record. Sources will be linked in the video description. So what are they claiming that NVIDIA is about to announce here? Okay, so remember that DLSS, at this point, there's multiple things under the same branding of DLSS. So there is the super resolution technology, which is rendering the game at a lower internal rendering resolution and then using the AI upscaling algorithm to output an image that looks like your monitor's native resolution. That is being announced to move up to 4.5, which is a second gen of their transformer model. But then frame generation, which is not upscaling, this is where you take two frames and kind of you, uh, you slight, slightly delay showing the most recent frame. You hold it in a buffer to use these two frames to decide what happened in between. And in the case of multiple frame generation, it's not just one frame in between, but multiple frames in between. Um, so that's frame generation. So in the past, NVIDIA has gone up to 4X frame generation, which inserts three frames in between your two uh, traditionally rendered frames. Uh, now they're moving up to 6X, which obviously would be more, but they're also saying that it is dynamic, which means it could adjust how many frames are in between any two particular frames. So this is interesting stuff. Now, what are they uh, giving us as far as details in the text? So with, for the upscaling algorithm, they're claiming improvements to the image quality, specifically improvements to temporal stability. So that's in, in motion. So when you have one frame, then the next frame, sometimes there can be some blurring uh, because each of those frames is actually at a lower internal resolution than what the al algorithm is trying to output. So there can be some blurring and loss of detail they're claiming better temporal stability. Another issue that you can have with these upscaling algorithms is in motion, you can sometimes leave a ghosted trail, kind of an after image of objects behind the image uh, that's in motion. That's called ghosting. And they're claiming that there will be less ghosting with this model. And they're also saying cleaner anti-aliasing. So, and they're saying that the company w is uh, sharing uh, some images of this, but they're not including those images in this leak. So if this is indeed the case, and then we get these official images, et cetera, I will do another video after this is official, if it becomes official, uh, and we can look into any uh, additional details that we have there. Now, when it comes to the dynamic frame generation, 
this sounds interesting to me, but uh, what I was mostly interested in is how exactly this dynamic mode would work. So it seems to be that you're targeting a certain output frame rate and it'll adjust the number of frames that you need, but where I have some curiosity on that is how does it uh, get a smooth output frame rate, like frame pacing? I'm wondering if you have to lose the actual native frames in order to do that, or if you just like retime them. So I have some questions on exactly how that's gonna work. Uh, we've seen lossless scaling, uh, which is a third party app you can get on Steam, I've reviewed it on the channel, uh, able to do this type of thing where you s set a certain target frame rate and then it just generates however many frames and timestamps them wherever it needs to in order to hit that output frame rate. This seems that like that type of thing with up to a 6x frame improvement if needed to hit that. Now the other question can be compatibility because some NVIDIA features have been locked to certain generations while others uh, you know, are open to more. So again, videocards.com is claiming that the new super resolution technology, so not the frame generation, is gonna be on all RTX GPUs, 20, 30, 40, and 50. However, the new frame generation would be a 50 series exclusive, which seems in line with the fact that multi-frame generation in general is already a 50 series exclusive. The 40 series had single frame generation, but not the multi-frame generation. And then the 20 and 30 series don't support any NVIDIA branded frame generation, although AMD frame generation has worked on them. So anyway, there that, that's the claims for this announcement from videocards.com. Again, we're expecting NVIDIA's announcement tomorrow, so we'll, I'm sure, be able to talk about this if it does come to pass in more detail at that point. Now, another interesting thing here is they're claiming in another article at videocards.com that NVIDIA has confirmed that there will be no RTX 50 Super GPUs being discussed at CES 2026. There had been a lot of leaks last year saying that we would expect to hear about the 50 Super Series at CES 2026, but since then, RAM prices went insane. And the most relevant upgrade the Super Series was planned to include, based on leaks and rumors, again, it was never officially discussed by NVIDIA, was the increase to VRAM capacities. However, if that increase to VRAM capacity would come at an astronomical price increase, unless NVIDIA was willing to take a massive hit to their margins, which we know they're not going to do, then there was a lot of leaks, rumors, and just speculation that made sense that due to RAM prices, the Super Series would either be delayed or canceled. So NVIDIA has apparently confirmed that the Super Series is not being announced at CES, but was promising updates for gamers. And this is official. This is not a leak or rumor. This is coming officially from NVIDIA, saying watch the GeForce On community update today, January 5th at 9 p.m. Pacific time to hear about the latest features, games, apps, and partner products for gamers and creators. Quick note, no G new GPUs will be announced. So it th this all seems to line up uh, that we'd be getting some kind of new gaming-related update, which is in line with this leak, but that it wouldn't be a new Super Series GPU, which they're clarifying right here. Again, at the time of filming here, we're now, what, like five or six hours away from the uh, beginning of this presentation, so there you go on that. Now, what are we expecting from AMD? AMD is also doing a presentation, uh, I think even sooner than the NVIDIA one, so in just a few hours from filming. And at this point, I haven't heard a lot about what uh, is leaked as far as to be expected gaming related out of this presentation, but we're starting to see even more retailers uh, listing the 9850X3D. So I would say if there's something gaming related to expect from the AMD presentation, it's probably the 9850X3D, but we have to see whether or not that is for sure actually the case. Again, at this point, we're seeing another store listing it. We've seen multiple other retailers listing it. We've seen AMD's official French website driver page list it, although that was taken down. And this latest store is actually listing, listing a release date of January 29th. Now remember the 9850X3D is just a 9800X3D with a small clock speed bump according to what we've seen about it so far. And this listing is lining up with the, those same claims regarding the small clock speed boost. So really this would just be a small improvement over what we've seen there. 
And then um, videocards.com is also mentioning that AMD is going to be adding to their AI Max series of processors. Uh, in this case, so th these are the Strix Halo uh, uh, APUs, the ones that have a huge amount of compute units for an APU. And so they're interesting in that capacity. They're also very expensive. So they're claiming at, at videocards.com that this will be announced by AMD today and that it's going to include some new uh, APU formats that have huge amounts of compute uh, for the GPU, but now with some smaller cores and thread targets. That seems to be the main difference from what I'm seeing here. And from a gaming standpoint, I think that could make a lot of sense, where you don't necessarily need 16 cores, 32 threads with your 40 compute units. What eight core, 16 thread is absolutely fine. If you still get those 40 compute units, this could be maybe saving some power budget, maybe saying some, um, uh, gaming, you, you know, uh, uh, performance, uh, because you can allocate power elsewhere and maybe saving some price, some silicon area, etc. Uh, so that seems to be the, the new announcement there, which is interesting, I guess. Uh, again, I'm not so much on the mobile side of things myself, as far as what we cover on the channel. And again, they're also apparently launching some additional AI 400 series processors with 12 Zen 5 cores up to 3.1 gigahertz, RDNA 3.5, 60 tops NPU. Again, for me, the main thing that would be interesting is if we started getting APUs with RDNA 4, so we could use the FSR4 upscaling or the upscaling formerly known as FSR4, but they seem to have rebranded it as FSR Redstone Upscaling ML. But anyway, that's kind of beside the point. So it looks like we're going to be getting uh, some extra APUs from AMD, which is kind of interesting, but not the main focus of my channel. The 9850X3D would be kind of neat if we get that officially announced, but at the same time, it's like a very small improvement on something we already have. So this certainly seems to be not that much leaked ahead of time. We'll see if there's anything more exciting in the actual official announcement. And what are we expecting from Intel? Uh, I found at WCCF Tech that they're talking about Intel Panther Lake Core Ultra Series 3 um, brought to life on 18A te technology. Now, this is laptop stuff, so again, kind of a bit outside my main wheelhouse of what we cover on the channel. So I, the main thing I'm seeing from this is that I hope that the performance is actually improving, their process nodes are improving, and that Intel just becomes more competitive uh, with their next generation of desktop CPUs when we get there. And there's some GPUs involved on these APUs as well. So I'm, I'm hoping that, in, that, sorry, that Intel just continues to improve, gets more competitive, all of that. We'll have to see how that goes. And I'm more interested in how it plays out in the desktop space. Now, all of this is overshadowed by the high RAM prices right now, so it is what it is, but that's what I've got for you guys as far as the pre-CES expectations, leaks, rumors, etc. Expect another video at some point once all of the announcements are official with me adding anything that wasn't leaked ahead of time or debunking any of these leaks if they ended up being wrong or getting additional information about all of this if that comes available. But for now, hopefully you guys enjoyed the kind of leaks, rumors, analysis, pre-CES announcements, and we'll have to see how it all plays out uh, in the near future. Hope all of you have an excellent day.